Hi, David Daly here, longtime principal of the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra in the south of England. And today I want to talk to you about learning to play Mozart, how to approach it and how to think about it. And um, whether you're actually learning for a performance or whether you're learning to go and do an audition, these are points that I think you'll find helpful. So we will be looking at Mozart Symphony number 39 and 40 in detail, but there's a couple of overall points that I'd just like to discuss to start with, which are relevant no matter what Mozart you're playing. First of all, if you're going to prepare for an audition, don't just learn the excerpts. Make sure you know the symphony, and that applies for all repertoire. These are absolutely wonderful symphonies. These three symphonies were, you know, it's hard to know what Mozart's greatest works are, but certainly they're right up there and they're so exciting to play. Fantastic music. So enjoy them, get to know them. Somehow I've listened to many, many auditions, probably over a hundred, and you can sometimes, you can somehow tell when people are just playing an excerpt without sort of the feel of the music. So make sure you know how the music feels. Right, so one thing that we need to remember, us modern musicians, obviously I have a modern instrument, a modern bow, steel strings. Of course, when Mozart wrote his 39th and 40th symphony, when he was writing, well, he wrote those in 1788. We're right in the middle of the classical period. And a really obvious point to make is that no one had ever heard a word of Shostakovich or Prok Prokofiev or Mahler, or Strauss, any of these composers. Nowadays, as contemporary musicians, of course, we have to, in a concert, we might play a Mozart symphony followed by a Strauss tone poem. And so we're sort of used to approaching these things differently. And it's very important in an audition just to be thinking about those things. You don't play Mozart with the same sort of edge and verve as you will play, say, Strauss, Heldenleben. You know, so just be aware of that. When you're playing, you sort of got to get into the classical world when you're playing a bit of Mozart. And that applies right across the board, all pieces. So um, let's have a look then at some details. If we think about something that you probably wouldn't even bother practicing if you get out your Mozart 40, the very beginning of it starts with just a G. Okay, it's in two octave Gs. Those Gs, you know, people sometimes say, well, Mozart is not terribly difficult, is it? Well, that's not difficult, is it? But in the context of this glorious opening of this G minor symphony, you have the upper strings playing a quaver, humming, out, humming away in a quaver pattern, quite soltasto, quite quiet. And we, at this point, the basses and cellos, establish the harmony and give rhythmic pulse. So if we're late or dragging, the whole symphony doesn't have any momentum. If we make the mistake of saying, you know, giving too much momentum, putting an accent, that's wrong because it's too aggressive. If it's too long, it loses its momentum as well. So you see what the, 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 the sort of the real artistry of playing Mozart well involves. Each note must start in a particular way, have a particular duration. I would say these notes, they have to start on time, but with no accent. We don't want that. Each one has a bit of decay. And all of a sudden we have this lovely, gentle, but very rhythmic, harmonic and um, rhythmic pulse, which sort of gets the whole symphony going. Right, and um, let's think very often we'll have a row of crotchets. So we'll have a, an entire bar of crotchets. How will we play them? Again, if it was Strauss or Prokofiev or something, it could well be that they would really need to be quite sharply accented. Something like that, depending on the context. You'll almost never do that in Mozart. Mozart, we, we just don't want any real hard edges. 
So a row of crotchets. They want a bit of definition. Obviously, if you don't have some definition, it's just going to sound, particularly in an orchestral context, we're not really going to hear any of the pulse. So there needs to be a bit of separation. And then, as with virtually all the classical music, just the classical repertoire, music of this period, it has a sort of a almost dance quality, very, very rhythmic. So when we're playing even a row of crotchets, it doesn't want to be static. It always should be feeling where the bar line is and probably thinking in two bars. So you have a sense of... Something like that. You might have, how, how, while I'm doing theirs, I'm doing a slight diminuendo and slight crescendo. And then um, I'm feeling where the bar line is very clearly. That turns just a row of dead quavers into something that actually gives life and impetus to the whole bass line. Um, when we have faster, these are just general points. We've done crotchets, let go to quavers. Let's say we have something like that. Again, it's slightly, I think there's two things we want to be aware of. If sometimes there are just repeated lines of quavers. And they're not, they're just, it's just really a harmonic note. It's just a life that comes from having quavers. So we definitely don't want to be doing that because it's going to get in the way of, of whatever the, the interesting stuff that's going on, probably in the other strings or winds. So generally, we will be using some sort of brush stroke. And for that, the default one, I, the way I think about it, is that the stick is bouncing, but the hair is sort of remaining on the string. Okay, so there's a few general thoughts about how best to approach Mozart. Right, let's have a look at some specifics.